This video shows how to write code that uses the compass on the back of the microbit. The code reads data from the compass to identify the direction that the compass is pointing, then displays it on the microbit as a standard abbreviation. For instance, north would be N, northeast would be NE, southeast would be SE, and so on. This is an intermediate project. It uses both conditional and Boolean logic to determine directions, and it also uses a variable to store the direction value retrieved from the compass. The compass is a type of sensor and it's located on the back of the micro bit in the lower left corner and is labeled compass. There are several types of compasses and this one is a magnetometer, which means that it uses the magnetic properties of the earth to determine direction. For more information on sensors, see the link in the video notes. This video covers implementing the algorithm without going into any detail on developing the project. For more information on developing the problem statement and the algorithm, see the accompanying blog post that is referenced in the notes. My name is Amy and I am the founder of Wonkits. I create projects and resources for teaching physical programming to middle and high school students. So let's get started. I'm in the work area of Make Code and I'm following the algorithm that I developed in the accompanying blog post. When writing code to read the microbit compass, we need to add a particular block that will calibrate the compass. This needs to be done before it can work properly, so we'll set that up before we do anything else. I want to point out that you don't need to calibrate the compass if you're just going to run the code in the simulator, but we're going to run it on an actual microbit at the end of this, so I'm going to go ahead and calibrate it. To do that, click on the input category, and then click on more, and then select Calibrate Compass. Now we want to put this in the on start block so that it happens as soon as the code starts running. The next thing I'm going to do is create a variable. We'll use the variable to keep track of the angle off north that the compass is pointing. And we'll check that to determine the direction that we're going to display on the LED array. To create a variable, go to Variables and click on Make a Variable. I'm going to call my variable MB angle. And then when you have the name in, click OK. And you'll see that make code creates two blocks, set angle to and change angle by. And it also creates a little block variable down here that you can use to compare the variable value to other values so that you can use it for decision making. Now we want to select set MB angle to zero and slide that under the calibrate compass in the on start block. We want to initialize the variable to a value, which is a good habit to get into. You don't necessarily need to do it in this code, but it is a good habit to get into. I'm going to use the forever loop to create the code. So each time the code loops through the forever block, the first thing that we want it to do is retrieve the current angle from the compass and store it in, in the value MB angle. Then we'll have it step through a series of if-then statements to determine what to write in the LED array. So here's the diagram of the angles I want to use to determine the range of values for each direction. The angle value increases in a clockwise direction. So you can see that we want northeast displayed when the degree is between 23 and 67. We want east displayed when it's between 68 and 112, and so on. The one angle that's a little different is north because it occurs on either side of the zero or 360 mark. So we want it when it's between zero and 22 on the right side and 338 and 360 on the left side. This diagram is also in the blog post. So we'll start by retrieving the angle and storing an angle. So I'm just going to duplicate the set angle to and drag that into the forever block. And then I'm going to go into input and select compass heading and drag that over the zero on the right side of the block. And you can see two red dots are created with a yellow line in between. And when I let go of that, it will just pop right into the spot. Now I'm going to build the if then statement. To do that, I go to logic and I want to select one of these two if-then blocks. And these are basically the same thing. I'm gonna use the first one and you'll see when I click on this plus sign, it'll just add an else. So I'm gonna select it and then drag it underneath the set MB angle to. And then if I click on the plus, like I said, you get an else block. I can select the plus again and pull up another else block. 
Now I'm going to use the list of angles that I showed you to set up my evaluations in the if then else block. We're going to start by handling the most complicated direction, which is north. We need to do a Boolean comparison, which means we compare two values that are both either true or false. The two values themselves are comparisons of the values for determining north. So one of the comparisons determines if the angle is between 0 and 22, and the other will determine if it's between 338 and 360. Then if either one of those is true, because they both can't be true, then we want to display an N for north. So I'm going to go back into logic, and I'm going to scroll down to where the Boolean comparisons are. Now you can see there's one with an AND and one with an OR, and these both are the same thing. Again, if I were to select on that down arrow, I could switch it to OR. So I'm just going to pull the first one out, and I'm going to place it over the true statement in the if then statement. And then I'm going to select that AND and turn it into an OR. Now I need a comparison here and a comparison in this one as well. So I'll go back into logic and select the standard comparison blocks. And you can see there's two here that are basically the same thing again. Um, if I click on the down arrow, it'll give me different options for greater than or less than and all of that. This one um, compares text, so we don't want to bother with that one. So we're going to select this one. I'm going to put it into the first hexagon. And then I'm going to duplicate it and put it into the second hexagon. And in the first one, I want to use MB angle. So I'm going to go to variables, select MB angle, and put that over the first zero. And then I'm going to duplicate it and put it over the second zero here. Yeah. And I want to drag my forever block down so I can see it a little clearer, more clearly. Now all I have to do here is verify that it's less than or equal to 22. So I'm going to make this a less than or equal. And I'm going to put 22 over that 0. And then on the other side, I want MB angle to be greater than or equal to 338. OK, so that's my first comparison. So now if either one of these is true, our angle will be north. Now remember, I don't need to verify if it's greater than or equal to 0 because it would never be less than 0. And I don't have to go over 360 either. I don't have to check that side either. Now that I have that in there, I need to display an N in the LED array. So I'm going to click on Basic and select Show String and drag that underneath the IF statement. And I'm going to change Hello to capital N. Now that we have that in there, the rest of these are all going to be a fairly straightforward comparison. Now I'm going to work my way around the rest of the values in a clockwise direction. So the next one I'm going to do is northeast. And that one needs to be between 23 and 67. So now I've already checked this value to see if it's less than or equal to 22. And MB angle didn't satisfy either one of these criteria. We know it's not below 22. So we're not going to bother to check for low values. So I'm going to select this and duplicate it. I'm going to slide it into this hexagon. And I'm just going to check to see if MB angle is less than or equal to 67. And then if it is less than or equal to 67, we're going to want to draw a northeast in the LED array. So I selected the show string, duplicated it, and now I'm just going to change this to northeast. So the rest of these are all just the same as what I did, except they're going to have different values in them. And I'm just going to speed things up so we can get through that real quick, and then we'll do the final one before we test it on the simulator and then on the compass itself. Now we're to the last one, which is going to be Northwest. We've checked every other possibility. So if we're to the point where it hasn't satisfied any of the criteria that we've already given it, we know that it has to be Northwest. So we're just going to use the else block, and we're going to put in the show string. So I'll duplicate that. 
and then we're just going to make this northwest. Now we can check these in the simulator. So I'm going to turn this to what looks like south to me, and sure enough, it shows south, southwest, west, northwest, north, northeast, and east. Now it's time for us to test this on the microbit itself. Once you download the code to your microbit, you need to calibrate the compass, and you do that by tilting the microbit all directions, and as it recognizes the direction you're tilting it, it's going to light up LEDs. So what you're trying to do is get all those LEDs in the, in the array to light up. There, and you get a smiley face when it's done. Now we can test it, and we can see right now it's saying south, and I am pointing this south. I'm going to turn it, and it's saying west. We have southwest. This should be northwest, and then north. Northeast, east, and southeast. That's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.